of the hour. Welcome back to Morning Joe. It is Thursday, January 6th. Joining us now, Democratic member of the House Armed Services Committee and U.S. Army veteran, Congressman Jason Crow of Colorado. He served two tours in Afghanistan as part of the Joint Special Operation Task Force. And, of course, he's here today, uh, one year after the attack on the Capitol yeah, on January 6th. Thank you, Congressman, for being here. You know, this is just one of those dates, at least for most Americans, I, I guess maybe 55, 60 percent of Americans who look back on that day is one of the bleakest uh, in, um, let's say, recent American history. I don't want to be melodramatic, but uh, I've been around for almost six decades, and I can't think of a day worse in it other than maybe, uh, you know, maybe September 11th. But there we are attacked by other people, not our own, uh, not by our own president. So, so I'm just curious, as you look back on this day, as somebody that was in that chamber— um, I want to know your thoughts about today, but more importantly for all of us that are listening, as somebody that, that has seen it, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, from, I'll say it, ground zero on January the 6th, what have you learned over the past year about that day? What, 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 how, how do you put it into perspective, better put it into perspective for yourself and for your constituents one year later? Well, good morning, and thanks for having me here. I, you know, I'm still processing the events of that day, as many people that went through it uh, are. You know, I spent most of my life fighting for this country, advocating for our democracy, upholding our Constitution. The first part of my life, I took my oath, became an enlisted uh, soldier, rose my right hand, and, and took that oath for the first, first time and um, swore to protect our Constitution and our democracy, and then spent the first half of my life advocating and fighting against foreign threats, I never thought that I'd spent the next uh, part of my public service advocating against and fighting against domestic threats, but that's what's happened. You know, we have a rising domestic extremist movement in America, uh, and we have to be serious about that. We have to be sober about that. Uh, and we have to address it uh, with, with vigor. So that's what we're going to do. But there is cause for hope, though. I think this is an opportunity for America to actually figure out uh, what has led us to this point, to address uh, some things that haven't been addressed in the hundred years, uh, hundreds of years of our history, uh, and actually have a new type of American patriotism that I'm calling on that can make us bigger uh, and stronger going forward. Uh, I would like to ex you have you expound on the opportunity for hope here, because uh, I think we're all looking for that. You do have a new op-ed for The Washington Post entitled, We Survived January 6th Locked in the House Chamber. Will Our Democracy Survive, Too? And you write in part this. In the past few years, the United States has witnessed substantial growth in a domestic extremist movement committed to using violence to overturn our democracy. The warped ideas that motivated the insurrection, the demonization of our fellow Americans, the unwillingness to accept the results of an election unless your side wins, and racially motivated conspiracy theories are growing. We must respond to this threat with strength and unity. This begins with a commitment to a new type of American patriotism, one rooted in a humility and honesty that recognizes our faults. We will overcome our challenges as a nation only by recognizing the problems of our past and how they shape our future. This requires an unrelenting commitment to the truth. American democracy is not inevitable. It exists because throughout our history, Americans have stood up and have fought for it. Now it's our turn. We could have lost it last year. This must be the year that we save it. So how does that happen, Congressman Crow, at, as long as Donald Trump is in the picture as a political leader? Well, Donald Trump will remain in the picture. I think we have to accept that. Uh, but that is, an, that is the opportunity for us, right? The opportunity for us to actually have this serious conversation, to have a new type of American patriotism that's rooted in humility, that's rooted in the truth. Uh, you know, there is strength in us coming and having an honest conversation and saying, you know, there are, there are forces that have been at work since day one of our country that we have never totally dealt with, whether it be the original th sin of slavery, whether it be uh, poverty, uh, the issues of class and race, it is time for us to have that serious conversation uh, as a nation and to get better. I mean, no organization, whether it be a business uh, or a family or a country, has ever 
uh, overcome its challenges by glossing over them or saying that they don't exist. So that is the opportunity mm -hmm. for us. I grew up uh, thinking, like many of us, that American democracy was inevitable. What I have realized, like so many other Americans over the last couple of years, uh, is that uh, our democracy is people. You know, no document, no institution, no tradition self-perpetuates democracy. It's people that decide to uphold it, whether they're poll watchers, election officials, members of Congress, people in civic organizations. Uh, so that's what this is about. You know, this is a call to action for us to volunteer as poll watchers and local uh, um, activists around the, the country to activate, to engage. Uh, that is what our piece is about, and that's what we're going to continue to call on. I, I have a democracy in action toolkit that I'm going to be releasing today uh, for us to uh, have concrete things uh, we can do to take action over the next year. Congressman, good morning. It's Willie Geis. Great to have you on this morning. Uh, I've talked to so many people in the days after January 6th, including that night, actually, and in the months since, who said, thank God Jason Crow was there. Thank God Captain Crow was there, the Army Ranger, with his bronze star. We looked at that photograph that went viral of you up in the balcony with Congresswoman Wild. You know what happened that day. You were there. You helped the members of Congress get through it. As you said, you went into Ranger mode. What do you think when you hear people minimize uh, and say that, you know, this is a case of Democrats and the media using that day to make it sound worse than it was for political purposes or ratings or whatever it is. You lived it. You survived it. You know what it was like. What do you think when you hear people, very prominent people, including the former president, say it wasn't so bad? Yeah. Uh, hi, Willie. Well, it's been a long time since I've been called Captain Crow, uh, but, but I'll take it, I guess. Um, you know, I, I still, like many people, I struggle with the merger of two different parts of my life. You know, I was an Army Ranger. I served uh, three combat tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, over 100 combat missions, both in conventional and special operations units. And when I was doing that work, you know, you have to be in a, a certain type of mindset, a certain type of uh, mental uh, um, a state to do that. Uh, and, you know, I took off my uniform a long time ago, uh, became a father, a veterans advocate, a member of Congress, and I thought that I left that part of my life behind and recovered from a lot of that experience. Uh, but then it came back. It came rushing back, and I had to take my emotions and set them aside and just run through those mental checklists uh, that uh, people do in situations like that to try to figure out how to make out uh, make it out of there alive. And that's what I did. Uh, so I'm still working through those feelings, to be honest with you, and kind of the merger of those two aspects of my life. Uh, but that's what happened. That's what we had to do. Uh, and I think about those officers, I think, is the last thing. Um, let's not forget that we had over 140 officers who were brutally beaten, uh, one of whom I, uh, I've become very close to over the last couple of years. Uh, and he called me uh, the day after this happened and uh, broke down into tears and, and just said, you know, sir, uh, I let you down. I tried to hold mm. back that mob as long as I could. Uh, eventually, they, they overwhelmed me, uh, and they brutally beat me. Uh, and uh, all I could think about was, was you and the members. Where are the members? And, and that we failed you. And I said, you know, you didn't fail us. Other people failed you. Mm. Other people failed you. I am proud of you and your work, and we're going to seek truth and accountability, and we're going to make sure this doesn't happen again. Congressman, good morning. It's uh, John Lemire. Thank you for sharing that. And obviously, we add our thanks to all those police officers at the Capitol who kept people safe um, that day. At the building behind you, in just a couple hours, the President of the United States is going to speak. He's going to address squarely what happened one year ago today. He's going to place the blame at the feet of his predecessor and calling him out by name, which is not something he does very often. What do you want to hear from the president today at this national moment as he addresses an extremely divided nation that can't even agree on what happened one year ago today? Well, I'm glad he's going to call out Donald Trump by name because that's what we need to do. Uh, part of seeking the truth is not shying away from it uh, and making sure that we are calling folks out. If they're going to turn our, their backs on our democracy, uh, if they're uh, going to double down on autocracy, uh, we're going to call them out by name and we're not going to shy away from those tough conversations. And that's going to require personal courage by Americans uh, throughout um, the country. Everybody needs to stand up and not shy away from the truth, and that's going to be hard sometimes, and it's going to be awkward, but that's what we need to do. Uh, but we also need a call to action. You know, I, I talk to folks in my community, uh, and a lot of people feel paralyzed. Uh, they, they understand what's happening, but they don't know what to do. They don't know how to respond to it, and that's why uh, we have a call to action, to volunteer, to activate, to engage, uh, to actually take 
uh, action over the next year to reaffirm our commitment to democracy. And, and I hope that President Biden and others join me uh, in, in join this movement uh, to say, let's stand up, let's stand together, uh, and let's defend our democracy in 2022. Congressman Jason Crow, thank you very much for joining us this morning with your reflection. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.